Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad and in this video short in this short video I'm going to talk about how to use a table constructor in DAX to build a sample table in Power BI if you want to create a table for testing your uh, DAX code. Uh, this can be a really useful way, an easy way to start with. Let's see how it works. To start this, let me give you an example. Let's say you want to experiment some DAX functions and one of the good ways to experiment these DAX functions is to start with a sample table, a table that doesn't have so much data in it and you can create that table even in Power BI using a DAX statement. Um, this is using a specific method, we call it table constructor. There is another way to create a table as well, uh, using a function called data table. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to show, to show you the table constructor method. So table constructor method is actually using these curly brackets for defining the table and the content inside uh, there. And each of these is one row separated with a comma from another row. These are inside parentheses now. Um, Let's start that from scratch and I show you how it works. To experiment that, you can start with creating a new table. Uh, that way you create a DAX calculated table. So I can create a new table. You can make your font size bigger or smaller using control plus minus or your mouse wheel. I'm going to leave this called as table two. But, um, and here I can have that curly bracket. So two curly bracket means that this is going to be a table, but this table should have something in it, right? Uh, like for example, one as a value. So this would be a table with one single column. The column name is value and the name and the value in that uh, column is one, which is the value we specified over here. This value can be also a blank value like that. But you cannot just leave it here and that becomes a value. That won't be a possible. Um, not unless you are in a row, uh, uh, row constructor. Then I can uh, also have like a text value, anything that is a string. So this can be a value as well. Now you can define uh, these uh, values like after each other, like these text or let's say sample or next. These are just some sample text that I uh, enter. You see that it will create one row per each of these elements over here. So it, in total, I have three rows. But what if I want to create um, multiple columns? Well, what if I want to, uh, to have a table with multiple columns? In that case, then you can uh, have these values inside parentheses. And if I have parentheses, inside the parentheses, now this is only one value that result in one. But if I have like another value, then these would be all of these would be one row. So parentheses is like a row constructor. You define a row with two columns and these are values of those two columns. Or like that, right? These are all numeric values at the moment but you can have any of these as anything text you want to as well and it works perfectly fine so uh, parentheses is a row constructor and to make it a little bit easier to read you can always use shift enter that goes to the next line this shows that this is like the table constructor this is the row constructor you can have a comma and then have the next row constructor after this so let's say that is two four six now i have one row with these values another row with these values and the value of each column is in that specific column based on the sequential order of these can you have uh, different values different value data types here yes you can like for example here i can have anything as a text but then if i do that this column's data type would become text as soon as you have multiple data types in one column this will change to be a text data type. 
Otherwise, it would be the data type of that value you specify over there. Like, for example, if I have a fourth column here and the data type of that is date, like, for example, now is a function that returns date. And here I have also today, another function that returns date time and type. <clears throat> type. So you see that this will become a date type, date time type. This is numeric, this is numeric, but this one that has multiple data types in it will become text. So it's pretty simple to add uh, values here, add rows and columns, you just need to add um, things like that. And if you want to skip a value, you can just have a blank in that space, right? So this means that the last row, I have actually four columns, but the first column value is blank. It doesn't really have anything, or I could have type blank here as well. And because now I made this numeric, now the data type of all of these would uh, became numeric. If I change it to text, they would be all become a text, or I change it to a date for now. 99, let's say 1st of January, and these would become date again. So it's not a really complicated uh, method. This is a table constructor with curly bracket, and you have a row constructor with parentheses, and columns are separated with comma. You should have the same number of columns in each row. Like, for example, I cannot have one less column in any of these rows. Like, for example, if I remove this, I'll get an error that uh, each tuple in table constructor must have the same number of columns. So you should not uh, have less column in uh, in one of the rows. They should uh, rows. They should all match the same number of values. You have the same number of columns. Another thing is that your columns would be always called value one, value two, value three, value four. But that's not a big problem because you can always come here and change it and that would be the the name of your column afterwards so that's not a big big deal um, and, and another thing is that you cannot enforce what data type you want here now there is another way to create a function and that is using a data table DAX function that gives you more flexibility in another video i'll explain about that but just this by itself is a really simple way to create a table a lot of um, people who are creating a measure table normally use a method like this that they create a table with just a blank value in it and that would give you a blank table then they add all their measures in that table so this can be used in many scenarios this is uh, how you can use it if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to our youtube channel we have weekly videos of power bi and ai Thank you.